Howdy YouTube and welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So this video here I'll be taking you guys through the paintwork on this Mazda CX-3 painted in ceramic. That is the colour name and the paint code is 47A. We're going to be zipping down the left hand side, we're doing the bonnet and also driver's side guard and front door. We're also doing the front bumper bar and a few door handles and one of the mirror caps as well. So what actually happened to this car was a piece of cement sheeting from a ceiling fell on top of the car. So there were scratches and scuffs all over it. The boss just said the car has to be perfect, it's a friend of mine, it's an insurance job. So whatever needs to be painted, we'll get it painted. They did some PDR repairs, so paintless dent removal repairs uh, around the rest of the car first. However, there was a couple of spots where there was some minor damage to the paint, just a few nicks, scratches, and a few minor dents that the PDR guys may not have been able to do perfectly. So we gave them a bit of a block and prime. That was on the passenger side of the left-hand side of the car. I've then, uh, well, I actually got my mate to do half the prep work on this car. We always thought that this was a three-stage pearl. Um, we had two jobs in this morning uh, when, I, when we painted this. And I said to the other guy, because he'd never done a three-stage pearl in the Chromax Pro Water one, I said, mate, take your choice. You know, you can have this job or you can have that little job there. It was just a rear bumper bar and a back panel. Easy job. I thought it would be a good, uh, good time for him to learn how to do it and just learn the procedure. And uh, he said, okay, yep, yep, I'll do that. You do the big one. As it turns out, I was laughing when I was mixing this colour up. I said, you know the best thing about my three-stage pearl? It's not even a three-stage pearl. It's just a standard two-stage metallic clear over base. And it sort of looks like a light primer. We were joking around saying it kind of looks like Value Shade Primer number two with a bit of pearl in it. Um, it's a bit of a sort of dirty, well, ceramic is the name of the colour. So yeah, a bit of a dirty white with a bit of the pearl inside it. Um, personally, I don't think it's the best colour I've seen. Not sure if I would buy it, but hey, obviously the owner likes it. I'm sure there's lots of people out there that really do like this colour. But I guess my job isn't to like the colours I'm painting, it's just to make sure they look right. Uh, so fairly straightforward procedure really. So we did all the prep work, we finished it off with 800 grit on the orbital sander and then did all the edges with 1000 grit as I've showed you guys in a fairly popular video I made recently which was the Waterborne prep work video. I've decided I'm actually going to uh, do another updated version of that because I haven't done a, a, an area that I've actually had to block primer and stuff like that so I'll do another one of them. People seem to like the prep work videos, uh, something a bit more than just watching me spray cars. I probably enjoy editing the painting side of it. It's the fun part but at the end of the day Spraying is probably only around 5% of the entire procedure by the time you get your prep work, your masking and everything else involved in it and the polishing and the colour matching and you get all that, you've probably only got around 5% of all of the work uh, is actually doing the spraying. But, as I say, it's the fun part. It's the part that I still love to do after over 16 years in this trade. So as you can obviously notice, I did heavily edit this video down just for the sake of uh, making it a little bit easier for me to narrate. Um, I included a little bit of footage there of that uh, air swivel that I've just recently got. That's the Prevost air swivel and um, yeah, as I say before in another video, I'm planning on doing a separate review on that SADA air fed respirator. So once I put that base coat down, I gave it maybe about 20 minutes. So I got these air blowers that I've got. I didn't actually get any footage of it this time. I got these Debulbus air blowers and set them up down the side of the car. And uh, yeah, that sort of definitely helps uh, dry this waterborne base coats. Something that you don't have to worry about with uh, your solvent base coats. But waterborne uh, needs a, a bit more airflow than the solvent does to actually help dry it. So the clear coat I'm using is Chromax 3760S VOC Clear. It's a high temp clear, so it uh, takes a little longer to dry than some of the other clears. But that actually can work in your advantage, especially when you're doing a job like this. So as it turns out, I ended up doing the grip and rip uh, technique or method, which is just putting that first coat on, sort of nice and wet, but not too wet, and then you follow that straight away by another wet coat. It's really not rocket science. It's something that the first few times you do it, it sort of seems a little bit scary. It just doesn't feel right. 
But once you get the hang of it, man, I'll tell you what, it's a very efficient way of painting and it's quick as well. Like you use a lot less paint doing it this way. I think I mentioned in other videos, I can use 130 mils per panel. So if I look at that, those two panels there, I'll say, you know what, that's a big door, but that's a small guard. So I'll just even that out to 130 mils per panel. When in reality, I'm probably only going to be using 90 mils on the fender, whereas I'll probably use 140, 150, maybe something like that on the door. So yeah, as it turns out, this entire job I mixed up uh, 1.25 litres, so, uh, and it ends up, at the end of the job, I had 100 mils of clear left. And you know what? I was kicking myself. I was saying to myself, that's too much clear, that's too much wasting. You know, um, but I've seen people paint one panel or two panels and be left with more than that. But that's why I always try to push myself um, to get the best efficiency as possible out of my clear coats, especially in base coats as well. I don't want to be throwing out any paint, especially once it's got hardener in it and you haven't got another job ready to go in. The paint's going to go hard and it's going to go to waste. So, especially when using these expensive clears, yeah, it is pretty important to be. Uh, quite efficient when you're spraying and uh, when you're mixing as well. Now with this application method you see me doing, I wouldn't do this with a medium solids clear. They've got another clear that we've got there in the paint room. Uh, we actually run two clears at this shop, so uh, I use the high temp VOC clear and the other painter I say, look, you're probably best off if you, if you haven't used this clear before and you don't really want to give it a shot, just stick with the chroma clear and that's a two coat application. So you must put one coat on, Give it five minutes or let it tack off, depending on the temperature. If it's a stinking hot day, you can just about, on a job like this, you'd be able to put your first coat on. By the time you get around, come back and put your second coat on. But you do use a little bit more clear uh, using those kind of clears anyway. So you probably noticed already that I'm using the Edgevilbus GTI Pro Light 1.3 mil with their T110 air cap on it. Really love this uh, gun and the air cap as well. So the reason I chose the T110 is because it's a Mazda. It's I would usually use the TE20 just for a standard everyday refinishing job, but I find that the T110 has a finer atomization and it's going to uh, replicate that Mazda finish a little bit easier. Even the apprentice came in and had a look at this job like the first or second year apprentice comes in and he goes, man, you did a real good job at uh, matching a factory orange peel and the factory finish of that Mazda on this job. And yep, I'm happy with it. It's something that I've been putting a lot of time and effort into over the years to uh, make it look like I've never been at that car. I want to do, be able to do a paint job on a car and have someone who's either a spray painter or in the industry look over that car in a year's time and not be able to pick the fact that I've been there. So you don't want shrink back, you don't want denibbing marks, you don't want runs, you don't want big sausages on the edges of panel. And that's something that I've actually uh, been starting to brainstorm. I'm gonna start writing down so, some of the big no-nos and uh, just the basics of spray painting and what you should try not to do. Uh, get those small things right, I guess, and then the big things will come after. But um, at the end of the day, it all is in the prep work. It all starts with your prep work. The guy that prepped most of this car is my partner in crime. I trust him. It's uh, something that you should be able to trust most tradesmen with, but at the end of the day, I actually can't. There's a lot of tradies out there that can't even do the simplest things like mask cars up properly. Anyway, that's it for this video, guys. Hope you've enjoyed it. Now you've seen this video, get out there and paint some shit. Thanks for watching, and this has been another Gunman Production. Goodbye.